It's interesting playing together because we've played together quite a few times now, we've done a few gigs together, but it's never like you've. I think for all of them you've had this sort of mixed setup, like mm -hmm. using the guitar and I, I guess super glider. Uh, yes. It's, um, and yeah. yeah, and for all the stuff I've done, I've just used acoustic drum set. 
Mm-hmm. And like with objects and other stuff like that, but like mm-hmm. I've never done like a mixed electronic setup. Um, so this is kind of our first time playing in a kind of double mixed setup, uh-huh. you know, which is, I don't know, really interesting because I, I, I like a lot of the electronic sounds that you pull out. And then often when I'm, I'm just on the acoustic kit, I kind of complement that, but in a, in a acoustic manner, like I, I, I can't. Well, I guess that your approach to the even the acoustic kit, it's um, it's nearer, you know, like the the one you you, you have right now or mm. something more electronic. Mm. Uh, the way you search for for sounds from the the drum pieces mm. and and even uh, like the objects that you take with you. <clears throat> I guess the the more like a uh, common uh, vector between the, the both approaches that you, you use. It just m- most sounds are uh, percussive. Mm-hmm. Even now, when you are using, uh, even even though there are more continuous sounds and all, like more variety of it, it's uh, there's not much of like a pitch like uh, as a constant. Yeah, and yeah. I think like it's what I felt or thought when I was playing was that oh I have this thing that it's different from what he's doing mm. because I can like play pitches yeah <laughs> and uh, <laughs> even though I don't know about you but we are improvising and mm. um, I always heard all the masters say like when you are improvising you you cannot think like mm. you, you have to to be a, in a more intuitive uh, state of mind so you don't boycott your own playing with uh, mm. too much thinking or it's harder when you have uh, electronic devices and technology because it kind of uh, gets you out of that uh, state of mind you know mm. um, but I think that after some practice because you have to uh, 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 prepare yourself by playing with the, the stuff that you have and you have to play it also in front of people and mm. and you start having some more uh, intuition about what kind of sounds you can pull off and when mm. so uh, uh, I don't think I, I really thought that I was using pitch but like now yeah, yeah. <laughs> like say, oh, maybe that was something that was, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I've thought it like so. I've, I've done a lot of playing, and I did one of these with a buddy of mine, Sam, who's a sax player. And we've played a lot together, where yeah. it's drums and sax, and in that context, the pitch and non-pitch bit is a big part of it. Because mm-hmm. with the sax, he has—I mean, he can do a lot of sounds, but he has a lot more pitch domain, which is, I guess, similar to what you're describing yeah. here, where. I mean, I do have some like this stuff that's a bit oh, more pitched. Sure, and but even the the other electronic sounds and yeah. the noises, they are pitches. Yeah, they are pitched too. Yeah, yeah. But, but but it doesn't tend to be something that I kind of I, I'm not thinking harmonically or anything yeah. like that or melodically. Like they're just they happen to be in the sounds of the other stuff. But you, what you mentioned before of, of it still being somewhat percussive is kind of interesting because I I hadn't really explicitly thought about it that way. But I I I guess. I mean, particularly with this setup right now with, with the, the synth, I have purposefully kind of set it up to be somewhat um, percussive. So like I'm triggering stuff mm-hmm. with my foot and that's, that's sort of a bass drummy kind of thing. And I have some rhythmic stuff I can do here. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess with, with electronic stuff, I'm, I'm always a little apprehensive of having, like you just turn on an on switch or something and then there's just like, yeah, there's stuff and it just kind of goes on without... Mm-hmm. you attending it so like with the percussive stuff and because it's so gestural and the way I try to play it is, is a bit more dynamic I guess I've tried to mirror that in the electronics to a certain extent so it's yeah it's kind of doing in this case it's audio analysis stuff so it's following me more closely but um yeah it's a cool idea that it's also I don't know why do you think about this but uh, like with technology you can either work in a more high level like what you said, like you press a button and somehow either the computer makes a sound or it's uh, like listening to you or with some parameters. Mm. Uh, or you can go really a low level and like you are in control of every little yeah. 
uh, nuggets of sound or uh, anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe I think that your approach it actually combines both because with the um, you you can you you are obviously you are controlling in the, with a very fine grain when sounds come out, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, I guess sometimes exactly what sound comes out, it's not uh, your you, it it you you shows that in your preparation or where yeah, yeah. when you set up the software. No, in, in this case, it's it's fairly chaotic. Like the synths and stuff I'm using for this are are kind of chaotic. Mm -hmm. So like even if I may, I like I can bring in quite rhythmic stuff with it, mm -hmm. um, but the sound that happens when I bring it in, you know, it's in it's in a bit of a domain of randomness. Okay. But I think like yeah, with those approaches, I mean, I have this fader here, which is not set up at all. I just, I just have it there on my desk for other just reasons. Because it, it looks good. It also <laughs> looks cool as well. But I like I've never been a fan of having like this map to one thing and this map to one thing, and then while playing, I'm like massaging like that one thing because I. Uh -huh. Particularly with this stuff, I don't have, I mean, for one, I don't have the the hands, you know, yeah. I don't have the, the limbs free to do that. Or even like if I'm doing one hand stuff, um, I don't want to care about the cutoff of the reverb yeah. filter, you know, like, yeah. um, so most of the stuff tends to be these more, it's not random, but like, I mean, for my stuff, there's a lot of audio analysis things where on the audio descriptors that are happening that is mapped to stuff which then affects stuff and it's still somewhat of a chaotic system because of the way that these things interplay mm -hmm. but at the same time so is the acoustic version of it so like i'll hit this thing and you know it's going to be slightly different depending on where i'm holding it also like there's some chaotic things that, that get nudged into effect with it but I, i'm i'm personally more a fan of of that but at the same time i don't like like where there's just a, a ton of random LFOs going or something like this, yeah. or, or or noise generators where you like do a thing and, and whatever comes out. Mm -hmm. Like the surprise is cool, but that's not something that like I'm super interested in doing that part. Yeah, of it. yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah. And so with 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 um, this, so like we've not really done this kind of thing before, but like how much of that do you have built in your instrument, like the electronic part of it? Like where where do you sit on that spectrum? Yeah. Mostly, uh, uh, this is very, this is all very simple, mm -hmm. even naive stuff. I I'm a believer in like the, uh, you have to build your own uh, tools and your instruments. Uh, your instruments are mm -hmm. uh, at least your tools and your uh, software. Uh, even when you are reinventing the wheel, I found out that you you never reinvent the wheel the same. Wait. No. <laughs> so, so I started with something. I guess you, you you can relate to this because I started trying to make a, a looper. Right. Yeah. You know. I, I know that yeah. you <laughs> made one also. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a good like beginner project because mm -hmm. uh, apparently it's easy. Mm -hmm. So you will just have to record something and then play it back in yeah, the same yeah. way. But the details of of yeah. the process <laughs> there. It's technologically uh, challenging mm -hmm. because you have to take care of how do you loop if it's going to a yeah. glitch or a clip or mm -hmm. and then there are many moments where you make choices like if you buy a looper pedal or a device it's engineering engineered towards a, a way of working with it mm -hmm. I guess it, the the way you engage with that device. Is already predefined in a certain way, mm -hmm. and maybe it's uh, thought out to to be played by people. Oh, I'll play a bass line, mm -hmm. and then it repeats, and I want to record something yeah. on top of that. And that kind of process didn't interest me so much. Mm -hmm. So I started. Oh, why? Maybe I don't have to do this. Mm -hmm. Maybe when I record again, it doesn't mix with the previous recording. Yeah. It just inserts some bits. Yeah. Maybe it's just. In sets where I, when there's no sound, it will record there, yeah. or stuff like that. And I, then when it plays back, it doesn't have to play back the entire thing. Yeah. It can only play just a little part, mm -hmm. or it can play really tiny parts and move them around. And so, uh, and this can be done in many different ways. So I'm not going. To, for, for example, in this part, I'm not controlling exactly which little part it's playing mm -hmm. because it's like fires a lot of them 
many times a second, mm -hmm. but I can control the overall texture yeah. of, of what I'm doing. And this kind of control, like you were saying, I, th I think it's very important when you are uh, playing with other people because you want to be uh, quick enough mm -hmm. to, to respond to... And this is al also very challenging, at least for me, and for <laughs> me it's still an uh, open problem that I, I didn't solve and I'm not uh, n nearly near <laughs> solving it. It's very, it's all very slow, mm -hmm. like uh, the in the the um, interface I'm using, like it's very slow, like moving yeah, stuff yeah. on a touch screen, or even if I have faders and stuff, it's it's not as fast as having a, an acoustic instrument yeah, and yeah. like you have your saxophone and you blow into the saxophone. Yeah, yeah. And it's uh, intimately connected to uh, the your will and your uh, musical imagination. Hmm. And here there's a, a disconnect. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, in, in terms of the time to respond to other people. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's very important to have at, at least um, a good control of you know, like the general gesture or texture or whatever, even though the minute details, mm -hmm. uh, that can be either be chaotic or... Uh, because it doesn't m matter that much anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Should I play a little more? Yeah, yeah, sure.